is Sunday, March 7th, 2021. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. If you determine the links, episode number uh, 593. Uh, we, uh, we're we we're doing one of those those shows, the uh, one of these. Just eat it, eat it. We are doing a Let's Talk About Food. We have just been talking about very, very, very weird stuff in the pre-show, which if you are not a patron <laughs> watching us live... I'm sorry, you won't hear it. Uh, I had to start the stream up uh, really quickly to to record it. But that's perfectly mm-hmm. fine because you know what they can do. They can go to patreoncom loud and for as little as a dollar a month, they can get access to the full episodes. Mm-hmm. Ding, ding. <laughs> We're totally not self promoting. I mean, perhaps this we, perhaps that's what we should do is move that stuff up into the beginning of the show. But anyways. <laughs> It's just one one of those things. It's like the feed also has like everything, so it also includes drag race. But oh yeah, if you're not if you're, also, you're not interested in in the drag race stuff, you don't have to listen to them. But if you're interested, Earth it's and, right there in one yeah, feed. You don't yeah, have to yeah, subscribe yeah, to two yeah. different feeds. And True. you get the pre-show of of drag race too. But we're talking about food today. So. If you would like shenanigans consider becoming a patron yeah hey oh my god the shenanigans speaking anyway, of shenanigans i am traumatized, I am traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen welcome to david's trauma <laughs> but let, let, let's let's get on to topic let's 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 talk about some food. Uh, Gary, uh, what specifically are we talking about when it comes to food today? Well, some people believe that food is sexy. If you Mm -hmm. recall, and it's going to take me a moment to look it up because I just remembered, um, we did not exactly do this We did did a reversal. (laughs) It wasn't Um, a let's talk about food sexy. (laughs) It was a let's talk about sex food. I can't remember. It was one. okay. Yeah, I think. It, yeah, I think it was an LTAS it had. Uh, 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 right, Pete was his name. Yeah, Uncle Pete was the guest. Well, we have we've talked about bottom friendly food. Um, oh, that, that too. Um. Oh, okay. So you want to know when this was? It Very was long episode- ago. COL 359. Um, wow. What is, it's not a palindrome. What is that when the, when the things are rearranged? Anagram? No. Like yeah, it's anagram. Anagram. Yeah. So <laughs> it was 359? And it's 593. Ooh. It- yeah, it's it's a it's a little reverse. No, no, it's not reverse. Play, play the Twilight music the now. For... <laughs> but that was that was when um, the episode that um, Uncle Pete and um, Hadrian were on to talk about the sensual, sexual like aspects of incorporating food into your sex play. Yes, that's what that one was about to kind of generalize it. Yeah, so. If y'all go back to three, what is it, 395? Yeah, 359. 359. Almost five years ago. (laughs) Oh, child. If you go back uh, five years ago, when we were younger, and, you know, Mm -hmm. free-spirited and and all that. um, If you go to that episode, you will probably recall that uh, I am not a fan of the idea of sex including food, just because... There's a messy factor as far as I'm concerned, and I'm not down with that. Uh, mm. Personally, that's just me. However, some people do think that food can be sexy in and of itself. Now, conceptually, this topic was more about like foods that we think are sexy, not foods you have sex with. Mm. If that if that can help folks understand a little bit. Um, 
Or so if you're I did a really a, good photographer. You could uh, uh, it take food and and put it into the sexies, as they commonly do for sorted food. They say yes, and now for the sexies. Correct when they dish. when they do nice rotating lazy susan photography that you know shows off the dish or whatever the sexies they refer to there is like what sells the dish which i mean is kind of true in a way um but you know the 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 interwebs the the intertubes are just chock full of various articles and things that say you know these are the foods that you know will enhance your sex life or get you in the mood or you know Allure your partner. Um, to be honest, most of them, I think, are geared towards women to turn on their man, or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that would be the discussion today um, in terms of. Uh, I guess we'll. Uh, we could go one of two paths. I'll let you guys choose. Do we want to start mm -hmm. talking about what we think are sexy foods, or would you rather talk about the two links that we have, and then go with these, and then talk about the thing? I'm about doing the links uh, to kind of inspire us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first link is called, uh, hang on, The Naughty Nine. These sexy foods are sure to get you in the mood. Um, and this is from ffactor.com, some random website, never heard of it. Um, apparently it's a diet. That's nice. So they, they actually, I kind of like this list because they run down foods slash ingredients. Um, mm -hmm. And as Damon and I were saying in pre-show that most of these we already heard of or were familiar with. And if you heard of the pre-show part about the celery <laughs> comedy. <laughs> I'm that's, sorry. That's because it's number seven on the list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will also say... I'm sorry, because because of that, we went down this very interesting track that, yeah. Um, mm, uh, yeah. It's all right. So as you, if you're watching us on YouTube, you see that there's some lovely, like, graphic kind of cutesy uh, imagery things. And these are the ones that most people probably think of in some fashion, at least two out of the three images that we put up. So uh, the top one on the list is chocolate. Um, in the article, they explain that it promotes uh, a release of a mood boosting, uh, sorry, mood boosting <laughs> hormone, <laughs> serotonin. Apparently, I need some, um, as well as uh, an amino acid that increases alertness and passion. Wink, wink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just be sure to choose antioxidant rich dark chocolate. None of this American. Hershey milk chocolate kids like that's just not that's not the bee's knees it's not gonna mm -hmm. kinda, in terms yeah, of the, chocolate is better anyways yeah, well, dark I mean, chocolate is better for you it is better uh, for you not everyone agrees with the taste though like if you yeah. grew up on a classic chocolate American diet yeah, you yeah. think of chocolate as having um, a higher fat content more vanilla flavor uh, so you you know gravitate that direction as I said and, Dark chocolate is better. <laughs> I'm Notice, I didn't say better you. for you. I just said I'm not debating better. with you about this. <laughs> you need to no. tell I'm a dark chocolate fan. No, not at all. You sound obnoxious. No. About it. So, <laughs> the... <laughs> so <laughs> it explains to look on the list of that make sure that natural cocoa fan. powder is. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that natural cocoa powder is one of the ingredients. Um, it also goes on to say that it helps and uh, may lower the risk of cancer, stroke, and heart disease. Obviously, you know, this is not a, a scientific statement, but there is some uh, evidence this could be possible. So uh, chocolate is kind of a, a classic one um, that most people think of. Hence, we give chocolates to our loved ones, you know, as a sign of endearment if you want to, you know. Try to make up for being a dick. <laughs> it's just so you're aware, Jeff. Jim loves dark chocolate. So I always get him dark chocolate on Valentine's Day. He has good taste. Yes. Yes, he does. <laughs> Not going to say it. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <Moving on. laughs> Thank the... you for opening that door, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Next. 
We Next need a up, derailed yes. sound effect. I don't know what it would be. <laughs> like a train. Just... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, moving on. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up uh, is one that like I've heard of, but I think people are very picky about. Mm-hmm. Oysters. No. I think this is one of the things where it's like there's some science in the the, the chemical combinations that it, that are part of the food because and some people it they especially if they like this food might could probably think of a, like a sensual date feeding your loved one or something and it just feel like thing you know interesting i can i can kind of see how that that could work but i think this is probably a chemical thing because this is disgusting (laughs) well yeah so it goes on to explain that oysters are rich seafood well and i'm i'm kind of in that same camp like i'm not a much of a seafood person so um i'm a seafood fan but not oysters no see if that's that's the thing is like this could be kind of a guess like if you're wanting to date somebody and you know think about sexy foods like you probably want to know whether or not they're into oysters um the article explains that oysters are rich in mineral zinc which is associated with male fertility potency and sex drive um and that zinc promotes a healthy metabolism and a healthy immune system so it explains uh if you slurp just two oysters that you've gotten enough of the daily requirement um so it is not a like that you have to go to an oyster bar and, you know, shuck down yeah. a couple dozen. Yeah. See, and here's my problem, okay, with oysters. Overall, in general, just putting it out there. When you can use words like slurp and shuck in regards to the food, I think we're done. <laughs> I think it's enough. Also, also okay. it sounds very sexy. I'm sure it does. Well, I was just going to say, I think David wants slurp and shuck to be used in the bedroom, not in the kitchen. Wait, that, where you at? that that where where are you at in my video are you wait you're Dad, i i uh, uh, lower right yeah lower right there you go <laughs> that <laughs> that right there gary gary is <laughs> is down into my left <laughs> and to you he's down to your right so uh yeah so oysters is kind of a classic <laughs> food that people think of uh, next up is mm-hmm. strawberries touted to be an aphrodisiac fruit since the roman days um some think that it's a heart-shaped item which is the symbol of venus the goddess of love um so this one i think is kind of a classic um Mm -hmm. at least to to americans in terms of if you think about like sensual foods like the way that you eat them not so much uh about what you do with them or chocolate and strawberries possible yeah. you, 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 possible. you get yeah. two of these foods all in one you see like the the, the like the chocolate fondue uh, f- uh, uh fountain and then you take some strawberries and you know, one loved one dips the the strawberry and feeds it to the other one it's just so romantic yeah uh i don't know about for the your two areas but around here chocolate dipped strawberries are a big freaking deal Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. And usually, Valentine's Day is a biggie. I'm trying to think when else. Probably Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. Um, those are probably the two big holiday times of year that the local chocolate shops like. That's a thing that people do. They go and they get chocolate dipped yeah. strawberries. Um, yeah. But chocolate dipped strawberries are volatile in that they have a very short <clears throat> shelf life. Um, yes. The strawberry fruit tends to start breaking down, I don't want to say immediately, but within short order. And so I've known people who have made chocolate dipped strawberries or worked for a local company that made them. And then they ended up with the leftovers that were going to get pitched because they were going to go bad. Mm -hmm. So I will say this. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. free food. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. free food is that, always good like that, like, you, like, let's that you like if you if you like it especially um uh yeah i'm not gonna mention that because that sounds creepy considering the topic um <laughs> <laughs> now i want to know yeah that's more intriguing that you edited aloud <laughs> i'm sorry i said that too loud um 
Well, fuck it. Um, um, so for a while, um, my mother would send me um, chocolate dipped strawberries for like Valentine's oh. Day or, or um, I think usually Valentine's Day. Um, she stopped because I told her to. <laughs> because <laughs> while I love chocolate and I love strawberries, getting a thing of like a half dozen or eight or ten of them, like if you go through like Series Berries, if you know that site, and you get like a whole bunch of them, mm-hmm. I can't eat them all. It's just me. <laughs> and um, well, it was this was when I was in my apartment, you know, kind of thing. So it's just a lot. And like you said, they do tend to go bad or break down quicker. Mm-hmm. And um, no one likes a soggy, un, like a soggy, like mushy strawberry. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know about you, but I don't. I mean, Sorry. if they're preserves, sure. But that's yeah, also made like, to be that way. <laughs> it's, it's it's intentional. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. For the intended purpose. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I swore you were gonna say bottom. No one <laughs> likes a soggy bottom, anyways. <laughs> ha. Or Nobody a dusty muffin, for that great. matter. But yeah. Uh, right. So strawberries are a thing. Uh, next up, hot spices such as cayenne, curry, cumin can make you feel warm, relax the body. Capsaicin, uh, the compound that gives chili peppers their kick. Um, can increase the heart rate and trigger the release of mood enhancing endorphins. Um, so that one, I mean, I've kind of uh, heard of, mm-hmm. but I don't know if I think about spicy, like spicy foods or as a spicy element as one that I think of as sexy. Now, I, I could be exaggerating, but as an MSM, I would say... Not spicy foods. No. <laughs> <laughs> For completely because, different reasons. <laughs> as my former roommate used to say, ooh, that's a whole burner. <laughs> <laughs> because his philosophy... I was going to say that. That's kind of true. His like, philosophy yeah. told me, if it burns going in, it's going to burn coming out. <laughs> Feel the burn, honey. Feel the burn. Now, um, some may be into that. I, you do you, boo. If if that's your, if that's your <laughs> this is true. Like if you if you like, you know, to have that sensation, but uh, out sensation. Like... <laughs> <laughs> ooh, out. Ooh, uh, out. Ooh, uh, out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I will give this one the only warning that I can. Um, just be aware um, that capsaicin is a potential allergen for people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so just be wary, you know, if you're making that dish for your loved one, like, and you, this is like a first date or something like that, just, just, just make sure. Because I know I have friends who are allergic to capsaicin specifically. So it's in like a lot of those spices themselves and they can't have them. Well, capsaicin so is just... what makes it spicy. Exactly. So Right, but the yeah. element they could be reactive to. Like I had a friend uh, who couldn't have anything really with heat. Not that they had to eat bland food, but they mm-hmm. really had to be careful. Like they were wary of anything that said the word pepper. Like, mm-hmm. didn't matter if it was black pepper, white pepper, red peppers, green peppers, yellow peppers. Like, it was all that family, even though there's, like, really uh, not much in terms of heat in some of those foods that can, you know, uh, mm-hmm. be reactive. I found more often than not, it's a person who is fair or complected. Um, uh, I don't want to say specifically that they're, like, Scotch or Irish in their background. But, like, in my experience, mm-hmm. those have been, like, the the folks that I've known that have been kind of more, like, you know, they yeah. they've learned that they they stay away. They they don't want the heartburn and the stomach upset and and all the rest of it that comes yeah. with it. So and to to be mm-hmm. fair, also the the next one has a similar issue. Right. So pine, pine nuts. Uh, <laughs> this is funny. Pine nuts are sexier than other nuts. Well, that's a bit <laughs> of an opinion, but um, it goes on to explain that they have lots of uh, protein in them. It can help boost stamina. Good in like monounsaturated fats, things, all that kind of stuff. Um, so pine nuts to me are kind of intriguing because 
they're not a, I guess, a typical nut. Um, no. Like most people, most Americans, when you say nuts, they probably think of peanuts, which are actually legumes, not a nut, but hence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but there's the whole plethora. There's like cashews, walnuts, Brazil nuts, almonds, almonds um, pecans. Yeah, pecans and, and, and academias. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's a ton. Uh, hazelnuts, filbert, sorry. Um, I personally, what's that? What? Pistachios. That is the one that I'm not. Hang on. For a <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, there's there's tons of different nuts to choose from. Pine nuts are more savory um, mm -hmm. as an application. Like I don't really ever see pine nuts used in dessert sweet things. They're mostly used uh, in it's dishes. Savory. And I yeah. I learned of them when I worked at a at a quote unquote an authentic Italian restaurant. It was actually Italian American, but anyways. Um, because it was used as an ingredient in dishes, and I was like, "What the hell is a pine nut? Never even heard of it before." Yeah. So that's a potential. Pine nuts from from pesto. You add it to pesto to give it mm -hmm. a little um solid, a little more solid. Give it a little bit more solidity. And also, solidity. apparently, it's not a tree nut. Mm. It uh -huh. is or it's not. It is not. It is not. Um, okay. Oh. It, it it's still you could still have someone who's allergic to it, but it's a oh. separate category of nut. It's a seed. Yes. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> the more you know. Um. <laughs> right. Well, how <laughs> how crazy is that? Um, I had a I had pine trees growing up as a kid. I don't think I ever remember seeing a pine nut. Saw pine yeah. cones, pine needles, pine branches, the whole tree. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. remember seeing pine nuts, really, so. Now you know why, because they're technically the seed. Yeah. Uh, next up, figs. Mm -hmm. um, contains amino acids, can help fire up sexual stamina. Um, perfect for sharing sliced, using in recipes. Uh, they can be chopped, pureed, all that kind of stuff. Um, they're also said to have been Cleopatra's favorite fruit. And apparently in historical lore, she was the great seducer. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, this was one of the ones that I was, I've heard of, but not heard of. As I mentioned um, in the pre-show, like I remember Greek, Greece, like that was kind of the thing. And mm -hmm. then the, now the Cleopatra reference definitely like puts it in like Greek Roman kind of feeling. That's where it came to my mind. I was like, oh, that makes sense now. Um, Although she was Egyptian. Egyptian. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just talking about the whole... Anthony, Cleopatra. So yeah. I still get a that, connection. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. That's my connection. Um, I... I used... To, I'm not... Okay. I, I love Fig. Um, I just... I think a lot of us know of, like, Fig Newtons. And mm -hmm. uh, I want to be like that. Like, don't. That's not. That's not the only like fig. That's not sexy, like, boo. I don't think so. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, fig Newton to me is like cookie you get with your baby. Like, no. Uh, delicious. <laughs> I, I know they're delicious. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying like I get it. Like they're good. I'm right. just saying like when I think of like if you think of fig and you think of fig Newton, you don't think sexy. Uh, well, you don't think it's so sexy. I well, don't I can sexy. I can see it sexy, even if it, I mean, in I, Fig Newton form. Although right, I would go more fruit, direct fruit, but yeah, I mean, I I agree. I don't think of a Fig Newton as sexy. I could see like certain applications, you know, like but that gets more into the territory of like sex with food or involving mm -hmm. food in some fashion, as opposed to just like the food yeah. in and of itself. Um, yeah. And, and I will say this, because I don't know for certain, figs have these tiny little seeds in them. Um, mm -hmm. I was just thinking, David, when you were talking about figs, I was like, oh, I would be more concerned about someone who has diverticulitis or yeah. IPS, mm -hmm. something along mm -hmm. those lines with their gastro that they may have to not have fig. Yeah, um, and you have to be really careful, um, although it's not as bad. So, okay, as someone who recently had about a diverticulitis, I'll go through this really quickly. 
when I was in the hospital, because Jim had it, has had it as well, and it's for years had to avoid things like strawberries and, and, and nuts and everything. But while I was in the hospital, one of the things they mentioned was you don't have to curve your diet as much as you used to. Like recent science mm -hmm. has kind of confirmed that you don't need to worry about it for the most part. Because the main concern, we're about to get gross folks, um, is that things with little seeds are nuts that don't digest fully get caught in little pockets in your intestines and then they mm -hmm. get inflamed. That's where the diverticulitis and stuff comes from. Okay. It's nasty, it's gross, whatever. Um, however, they are saying now, if you increase your fiber, increase mm -hmm. your water, and eat, you can still eat those things and not have as much of a worry nowadays. Having said that, though, you still have to worry about it. <laughs> like right. it's just not as like oh my god like I can't ever have these ever again which is what Jim would have been dealing with for 20 plus years um, well right so what you're saying to me practically is sound in that you can have these things probably in moderation mm -hmm. like you know don't go hog wild like probably don't eat a whole package of fig newtons um, yeah. you know or you know two pounds of strawberries um, mm -hmm. in one sitting or if you do, at least balance it in terms of like fiber, because the fiber is going to allow like your GI tract to help move things along. And yep. theoretically, fiber that is insoluble, in other words, that like gives you the uh, stuff that you excrete, theoretically, it will help bring along or track with it the stuff that causes mm -hmm. the diverticulitis. So that all makes sense to me. Which kind into the next one. Well, <laughs> So true, Jeff. So Fair. Uh, Fair. for those that don't know, as a little bit of background, um, uh, going on 11 years ago, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. Um, and so I had uh, surgery um, and some stuff. So I learned a bunch at the time about some different aspects of, of that. And I've always been in, more interested in GI health because of that kind of uh, stuff. And once you've had a thing with GI, you kind of tend to pay attention uh, this isn't meant to be gross. You kind of pay attention to what comes out because mm -hmm. it is an indication of your personal health. There's, and you can look it up online. We're not going to get into it, but there are color codes. There are things about the shape and like consistency and all that, that helps determine like if you're having some issues. And I highly suggest people just kind of get yourself a little aware of that because it can be very helpful because then you kind of know like, okay, is this normal? Is this not normal? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And and it helps when things change color and you're not necessarily prepared for that because then you're like, okay, am I dying? No. <laughs> I, I ate beets. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Calm down. <Yep. laughs> so last week. It's been very fun. Um. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so speaking of things that can affect uh, you, we're moving on to the next degree, uh, which is celery. Um, so it's funny because the article does say rarely the first food people think of uh, when talking aphrodisiacs, which I agree. Uh, but apparently, when a man eats celery, it prompts the release of pheromones through his sweat, acting as a nature's love potion. I'm not so sure about that. But uh, um, this next line I have a big issue with. It says, ladies, celery can make you sexier, uh, too, because it's great for slimming. All right. Listen, you fat phobic shits. I don't have time. For <laughs> like. Women do not need to be slimming. Men do not need to be like a certain size either. Like, how dare you? Go ahead. Just, just eat the celery if you like the celery. Dip it in ranch. Dip it in peanut butter, almond butter. I don't whatever. Like, float your boat, kids. Like, don't don't get into that. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's a it, as a negative calorie food. Suggesting celery burns more calories than it contains. Yeah. It's oh, a, it, go ahead. It, and it's it, it it's one of those things where it might even be mentioned for those people who are looking to slim down for whatever reason. So, but totally fair point. Yeah, Ranger said in the the live chat his partner has Crohn's and they uh, talk about it a lot. Um, so I think they mean like, you know, in terms of like the food that you're eating and what's mm -hmm. uh, happening in terms of like how your body processes the food. So, yeah. Um, so I do agree with David. Like celery was one of this list of nine that I wasn't prepared for, um, as well as this next one. 
watermelon. See, uh, mm. this, this is another one where it's like a nice refreshing thing at a picnic feeding to your partner sort of thing that I'm thinking about versus well, chemical reactions. <laughs> Right, right. But here's the thing, though, kids. Like, so listen to this, and now I want you to think about this every time you eat watermelon going forward. So watermelon contains a compound that's an amino acid that increases nitric acid in the body, which has been shown to relax blood vessels, increase blood flow, and sexual arousal. Ow, ow. <laughs> So it says the fruit does more than get us in the mood. It gets us going thanks to a potent array of antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. So I will tell you this. Every time I've eaten watermelon in my life, I am not, like, feeling all horned up afterwards. I did not ever make, a, like, a correlation, a connection between the two and said to myself, like, let me have some of that sweet, sweet, you know, melon fruit and then, you know, <laughs> find myself with an erection I know not what to do with. Like, that's just not a thing that's happened for me. You okay, David? <laughs> the, way, the way you're saying it, it's just very... Mm. <laughs> but now every time I go through the store or the market or whatever, and I and I see a watermelon, I'm like, hey, baby. You know, I mean... <laughs> Stop it. Stop I mean, it. It, it, is, it is a big fruit. I mean, yes. Hey, which see, which can be very are, punny if you think about it. When bear events come back around, bitches, you watch. <laughs> Watermelon's going to be the thing. Watermelon's going to be the thing. Watermelon in a fruit salad, which is also going to have strawberries, and for some reason, figs and celery. Like, no one's going to know why. <laughs> like, it's just going to be this. <laughs> well, celery is a vegetable, so it doesn't really fit in a fruit salad, but, you know, eh, a, a fruit salad of fair. strawberries, no figs, and, and watermelon. Well, no, but you know what? You could kind of make this work. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. So, strawberries, figs, watermelon. I'm not so sure about the celery. Uh, <laughs> could be blended into, like, kind of a salad. You could have, like, a very light, like, chocolate uh, kind of shaving powder, potentially, with a little cayenne in it. You've practically mm -hmm. served up a fruit salad that, like, has most of these items. Well, so. and putting some cayenne into, to, like... It, if you look at uh, AB's uh, Alton Brown's um, uh, 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 Cocoa Mix mm -hmm. that, that he has on one of his Art of Darkness ep uh, episodes, um, he always adds cayenne th to chocolate because mm -hmm. they, they complement each other. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, maybe. So, mm -hmm. there's, there's some big potential. Uh, last on the list, avocado and we're not avocado. talking toast kids <laughs> so i didn't know that in aztec i'm not even going to bother to try to pronounce uh that um apparently in aztec avocado, avocado that pronunciation means testicle and then the next part is great so there's that <laughs> avocado? I, can, I can pronounce the last part coddle <laughs> Ahacato? Anyway. Anyway. Ahacato. Yeah, ahacato. That's why I wasn't going to try. It, it's avocado. kind of like auto, avocado with an accent. <laughs> avocado! Let's let the, let's let the, the, the non-speakers butcher the hell out of it. Yay. <laughs> Fact. So, um, apparently, uh, avocado has high levels of folic acid, vitamin B9, uh, which increases energy, B6, which has been linked mm -hmm. to increasing testosterone production. Um, great source mm -hmm. of energy-sustaining fiber. So, like, I love it. It says, so we cool with guac being extra? Yes, yes, very okay with that. <laughs> Just, you could make your own. It's not that difficult. Um, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and you could probably fit some celery into a guacamole. Yes. There you go. There you go. Take a celery stock, dip it in your guac. Chow there out. you go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Chow down and get. You, you know how, how how they the <laughs> the peanut butter and celery has been used. You could use guac and celery. Oh, girl. <laughs> <sighs> hmm. go yeah. Um, so I will admit again, like we were talking earlier, this list is very interesting. I get it. Um, there are like 
we talked about like the last three foods are three I've not really heard of. Um, and I've not, I will admit, I've not really heard of, I thought I did, but pine nuts is kind of a uh, like thing. Um, I've always thought of like nuts as more um, brain enhancing. Like you think of like walnuts and all that stuff. Mm. Like they're more like, so that could potentially work in the sexual front, but I hadn't heard it in that way. Uh, am I going to potentially add some of these foods to get like things in the, in the, in the bit? No, um, I'm not. Um, I just, don't, I don't like oysters. I, I just, I can't, I, I, cause the yeah. only way to really probably get the, the product, the, the whatever is to eat them raw. And I just, the, I, the idea behind it just grosses me out. Also oh, yeah. for me, it's seafood. Yeah, well, I like seafood. See, like, I, I like, <laughs> yeah, I like I like seafood and fish and shrimp and and, and salmon and stuff like that. Uh, I've had fried oysters before. I won't eat those again. Um, so I know I, um, and I've had I, I can eat like fried clams. Like if it's fried, I'm okay because you know usually a batter and whatever just makes it all the better. But um. Other than that, no. You should go to um, Minnesota State Fair. Mm -mm. <laughs> uh, so, fried Oreos. Mm, 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 mm. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> there is another article. Uh, we're not going to go through the whole thing, uh, but it's 70 plus healthy, sexy aphrodisiac recipes. Um, and so the, in the beginning of it, it talks about... Um, common aphrodisiac foods which are known to increase blood circulation and get the love sex neurons in your brains and loins <laughs> firing uh some of these we've already discussed fish and seafood particularly oysters avocados uh chocolate figs they say berries basically is a general thing um pine nuts and i'm kind of editing and running through the list now the other things that they mention um that i found intriguing uh, olive oil Mm -hmm. uh, this one I'm I'm gonna have to say uh, pass asparagus. See, I wonder why. Agree to disagree. So here's the thing: I don't mind eating asparagus. I'm just not a fan of the after effect. <laughs> hey, it's <laughs> it's not for everybody. So but I love asparagus. I'm just not. I just don't think of asparagus as like a. Like sexy aphrodisiac food. I mean, no, no it is no. Nope. Phallic. Ahead. I mean, sure, it's phallic in shape, but that does not qualify it as a sexy food. Like, <laughs> my head just went to a really bad place, and I don't want to go there. What? Like you made a flogger out of asparagus and used it on somebody? No, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. That is not where my head went. <laughs> but thanks for the for the other part. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, continue, continue. Some other items that it lists: arugula. I'm like, okay, mm. not aware of, of anything from the lettuce family, so to speak, to to be an aphrodisiac same sexy use. food. But it could. All right. So the next two, uh, separate or combined, I can understand. Bananas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sorry. At least in American society, we are big old perverts. And any time you see somebody putting a banana up to their mouth, invariably people are supplanting and putting a penis in place of the banana. Yeah, that's just. Okay. I, ha, you know how many videos there are on Twitter and um, Tumblr and TikTok and whatever of guys doing the whole like taking a banana and like. Shoving it down their Deep throat, throat to show how much, yeah. yep, just so how much they can take it down. Like we've seen it, we know it. So like, there you go. Like that's there, that's that. Hey, if you're into advertising, good for you. I mean, because that's really what you're doing. You're promoting your own skills. Um, <laughs> personally, like I'm one that kind of uh, would. I mean, I would. All right, there would be a brief moment of like probably like oh look at that and then i'd be like and <laughs> like first of all i'm not that big 
So that mm-hmm. that is not going to happen if we're together, just for the record. So I that's mean, not a skill that's going to be applied in this moment. Just say it. So. Also, no bananas have a natural curve to them that can go down easily. Yeah. Just saying, <laughs> most, They're most also penises don't a little, have. little softer to you. Also that, down. but true. Anyway. Just because you could swallow foods whole does not necessarily mean that I'm impressed, personally. Um, And I would be slightly concerned for them because I will just say this. I'm going to leave some details out. Um, Someone who is close in my age and my family did confess to me that they don't have a gag reflex. And that is problematic sometimes when they eat because sometimes they end up swallowing food before they're done chewing it. Mm Mmm. And I was mm-hmm. like, well, that's a fact. I didn't know. <laughs> Sometimes there is a point to have a gag reflex. Well, I've always said, like, <clears throat> hand, hand to whatever you believe in. Um, I have a gag reflex and I have no qualms about that. Like, I'm not, I don't advertise it, but I don't, like, shy away from it. Like, some people are like, oh, I have no gag reflex. You know, like, it's a big advertising opportunity. I'm like... I'm okay with having a gag reflex. It's the way my body's supposed to work. It's supposed to tell me, hey, this probably should not be going here. <laughs> and it's not so much uh-huh. that, it, right. And, and it's not so much that, you know, I delighted it. I'm just saying like, it's okay. And yes, you can work on it and improve it and make it, you know, so it's not. Yeah, you can do gag control. Yes. Like, it's like, yeah, yeah I know you don't want it, but that's okay. It's fine. <laughs> 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 nice. You don't want it, but you do want it. Um, so after bananas is honey. Um, honey has many different uses. Um, this is one of those foods that I think people want to take into the bedroom or wherever they're going to be freaky. And I'm like, mm, I'm just... A little too sticky. Uh, yeah. Yes. I... It's not the sticky that I want. The type of sticky that I want. Yeah. Fact. My, my thing is, um, I'm going to need a shower. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just going to have to shower. But anyway, that's what that is. Um, other items uh, artichokes. So I vaguely recall this is like a, as a previous like thought or memory or idea or whatever that artichokes are. Um, considered like kind of an aphrodisiac ingredient um, but I don't know if it's because of the artichoke like which I think artichokes are a fruit um, because of like how they're composed and like you know what you go through to get you know the edible parts of an artichoke I don't know um, to me that that may be a thing I have to look up whatever the hell this thing is mm. the next thing Maca. It's a plant. Never heard of it. Uh, are you or... are vegetables? Okay. Fair point. Uh, the next item that they listed was maca. Uh, it's a Peruvian ginseng, apparently. Mm. Native to South funny. America. Never heard of it before. But you could get supplements of it. <laughs> yep. Interesting. Okay, there we go. Uh, Garlic? Uh, No. Um. (laughs) This is in regards to chemical reactions inside the body, not how much it exhausts, per se. Uh Uh-huh. Although I love the smell of garlic, so... Eh, needs their own... I I, I, I just... I, uh, I don't... Okay. When I'm thinking sex, I'm not thinking garlic. Like I'm just gonna put it out there. Like, like garlic does not come to mind. So you don't get I'm... you get you don't get turned on by the smell of garlic. Like no. Okay. Garlic is more. Okay. It. It. Let me rephrase. I like the smell. Like I get like Jeff. I like the smell of garlic. I like it when it's cooking. It makes me hungry. <laughs> Just, just wait, not wait, hungry in just, that way. Let me guess. Let me guess. 
you get hungry, but you don't want to be a cock gobbler. That's the that's the distinction. That. <laughs> <laughs> but if, it, if it's more something that it's it's garlic that's mixed in the food where it's not really something that would necessarily provide garlic breath yeah maybe it's probably more the application yeah maybe uh next again up is cinnamon. chemical reactions and bodies Anyways, moving on. Right, I agree. Like a lot of this, this particular article with the recipes, I think the point is like you include these foods, um, per se. Cinnamon, um, I think I recall like hearing about that before. I know that cinnamon um, for a while was touted. I don't know if it still is um, as a blood sugar like uh, balancing um, item. You can mm -hmm. cinnamon. You could put cinnamon regularly in your diet. You can actually get it in a supplement form. Um, mm -hmm. My dad actually did it for quite a while to uh, help uh, him. So there's there's a potential with that. Just don't do the uh, cinnamon yeah. challenge. Just no. don't. Just don't. <laughs> you know, I can do the cinnamon roll challenge, but not the cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> David's like, you could do the cinnamon challenge. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although maybe not the Cinnabon challenge because those things are like so unhealthy for you, but <laughs> super sweet. Anyways, anyway. moving on. Uh, pomegranate. Okay, so <laughs> sorry, David. You went on a whole kombucha grill <laughs> over there with the face. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> This is an episode where it's just kind of like watching Damon's reactions. He's he totally channeled Brittany Broski in that moment. He was like, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. um, I I know if you know of the myth, the Greek myth of the pomegranate seeds and and Persephone, Persephone in hell, um, that whole thing, that kind of makes sense to me. Okay. But that's the only reason why it does. Like, oh, I've never, but I've, again, I've never considered, um, hi, um, I've never considered um, pomegranate as, like, sexy kind of food. Well, so, uh, yeah, I'm kind of, like, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm really kind of feeling mixed about this. Like, pomegranate in and of itself, like, there's a labor to get, like, actual, like, the pomegranate, like, um, Perils, I think is what they're called, like the interior um, seeds, so to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to, you know, crack the crack it open. There's a couple different methods for getting the seeds out. One of them is to whack it with a spoon, so you spank the shit out of it. Um, sure, mm -hmm. that could be, you know, alluring it away. Uh, but I don't think that's what they mean here. So, and then it gets complicated because I think of Palm, the company that makes pomegranate juice. And mm -hmm. this is going to be the strangest throwback to pre-show. I'm sorry. Sometimes palm bottles look like a Kong. Or a <laughs> and we're bringing See, it back. You know, that, that's true. And that's rounded. I mean, it's true. <laughs> I don't for know For those, those people who don't know what a Kong looks like, I got one over right here. Was, uh, this is yeah. what I used to, to, to give to Sonic to distract her. I uh, filled it with peanut butter. Nice. Yeah, so I make sure I'm pointing to the right camera. I got two of them. <laughs> so the yeah, so pomegranates. I'm like, Ooh, okay, maybe, maybe. Um, um, next up, cherries. So yeah, I mm -hmm. think that's kind of a classic. Um, and I will say that there's a distinction I think probably between cherries, the fruit, and cherry stems, the classic bar trick. Uh, oh. Right, where you take your tongue and you tie the, the stem into a knot. Um, like, while I like to think I am orally talented, that is not a trick that I know how to do. I have not been able to conceive how you make that work inside of your mouth. It, but then again, it, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to stick things in my mouth to turn, tie them into a knot, uh, just for the record. Like, <laughs> I don't know where this came from, how some human being was like, you know... It, Let me it's see just a demonstration I... of the dexterity of your tongue, you know. It's... That's yeah. Although right. I, I wouldn't be surprised if part of the trick is is like using your teeth to kind of hold it in place or something like that. But yeah, just so you're aware. Yeah, 
Yeah. So I used to be able to do it really, really well. I can't do it as much anymore. Um, the t- it, I need in order for me to do it properly, I need a longer stem. It just helps that way. Um, but I used to, <laughs> I used to be able to do it. Um, and it is essentially a trick to show your dexterity because you know you can move your tongue a lot, and it's it's kind of titillating to be able to do that. Not so much anymore. I'm out of practice and I don't do it as much. Um, but it does evolve a little. Like if if you if if you can do it all and get the knot in hard, like like rigid enough to where it doesn't come become undone without using your teeth. Um, you got a, a, a very, very talented tongue. Um, I had to use a little bit of teeth, like, to get some of it done. Was it was it possible to do it without it? Maybe, but it becomes a lot. It, it becomes a lot harder. You don't get the like full on knot. You get like a little twist, and it it doesn't really work. It doesn't really fulfill the 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 whole purpose. If you plop it out of your mouth and it it it's tied as you have it there and then you drop it and it comes undone. Yeah. Well, I also think that that cherries is is also one of those foods uh, which are good for like feeding the other person. You know, you hold mm-hmm. onto the stem, put it in the mouth, and tug it off. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it, it very much like grapes, although grapes aren't on this list, but that's probably because they're more sugary. Yeah. Moving on. Pumpkin seeds. Mm. I don't think of pepitos as sexy aphrodisiac kind of food. Again, this is probably a chemical reaction sort of thing. Right. Like, sure, you could maybe grind pumpkin seeds into a paste, like and like use that also it is a thing as an ingredient i don't know this that one kind of puzzled me but then again like some of these last ones are going to uh beets um beets i find like are really divisive like Mm -hmm. i think either you like them or you don't and that's just honestly i don't think i've ever had beets so Mm. i don't know uh, and if I have, so, I don't remember it. It's been such a long time that I, yeah. ju- I just don't know. So I'm, I'm going to yeah. abstain from that one. I, yeah. I like beets and I enjoy, like I've, I've had it, I've had it like cold and like a salad with like blue cheese and, and, and like, like actual pieces of blue cheese, not blue cheese dressing. Um, and it was really, really satisfying. Um, but then I've had them like just recently um, roasted. You know, um, Jim took a lot of time and care until like he got them um, skinned. Gosh, the word that came out of my skin, and then cut up, and then he roasted them earlier in the day, and then he saved them and then put them into dinner later to kind of roast them, and they were so good. Mm. Um, just a little bit of he added. A little something, I think it was a like a sweet and sour or something along those lines, just to kind of give it a little bit of a flavor, which really did help. Mm. Um, so yeah, it it depends, I think. But again, I don't, again, in the corrupt context of this episode, no, I don't think beats are sexy. I don't think beets have that <laughs> sexy quality. Again, if it's chemical like reactions, antioxidant, chemical reactions. chemical reaction thing, like, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Um, this article, unfortunately, doesn't do what the article article does, which was giving us a little bit more information. Um, however, I'm wondering if some of these foods are related to foods that we are, have already talked about. Well, do keep in uh, mind that, that, that previously we're... we're in the article, the, the sentence, this is just a list of, of things, but it says, in general, right. these are aphrodisiac foods which are known to increase blood circulation and get the love-slash-sex neurons in your brains and loins firing. Right. Got so it. they they, they give a broad thing. They don't get, go into the more of the specifics about it. Mm-hmm. Well, and after these ingredients that we're about to wrap up, they do say, in general, you're aiming for a meal that is nourishing, complete, satisfying, without causing inflammation. 
mm-hmm. meaning like your body isn't agitated by like eating these particular foods. So um, I get that, uh, you know, and they also go on to kind of talk about how like your goal is uh, not to get into uh, a coma <laughs> like after you've eaten a meal. So um, next up, almonds, which uh, I mean, I could see that to a point. I, I mean, almonds are easily included in a lot of foods. Uh, mm-hmm. Whether they're whole, ground, slivered, chopped, um, skinned, um, they have lots of different applications. So I could kind of understand that. Um, ginger, which is one of my personal favorites, um, only because, like, this is a this is a a, a root. Uh, I believe it's mm-hmm. called rhizome uh, mm-hmm. that has spice to it. Um, and has like I believe lots of antioxidant um, factors and stuff. I personally like it. Like every once in a while, I'll uh, kind of have a mood and I'll go buy just plain ginger root, and then um, either juice it or chop it up finely, or um, you know use a grater or whatever to add to different things. And if I juice it, then I tend to add it to like water with lemon and some honey. Uh, usually, I mm-hmm. use it to put into tea especially in the winter, like if I feel, if I'm feeling extra yucky, um, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Of course you have so, things like ginger ale and ginger, uh, beer. Yes. Um, I'm one of those people that likes it on, I don't mind hot. Like when people talk about like drinking ginger ale or ginger beer, for an example, I'm okay with things that have a kick. Mm-hmm. Um, I think more often than not, this is a huge generality uh, as a opinion. Americans are not keen on like g- their ginger being spicy, especially when it comes to a drink. Um, yeah. Like especially if they're going to have something like a Moscow Mule or whatever. I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm one of those that will actually seek out a brand because I know it's going to deliver on the ginger flavor. Yeah. Um, yeah. But don't get me wrong. Like I've had Canada Dry, Schweppes, you know yeah. these different um, these different brands. Um, you know, and, and really uh, liked what the they're offering. It's just like what you're in the mood for. So yeah, one of my favorite places to go. Um, there's a place in Columbus that my friend um, Ben reminded me of, that we went to, and they make their own ginger ale. Mm. And oh my god, it's amazing. Uh, it has it's just enough of like a kick where you know the ginger's there and you know it's like fresh ginger and it's 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 but it's not oh my god it's a kick and a punch to the like to the gut it's very it's not subtle but it's not overpowering it's a nice little blend of that middle ground that i think many of us well not many of us i think people would enjoy i mean i think it's one of the popular items so mm-hmm. yeah all right, this next one really throws me for a loop. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> Coconut water. No. <laughs> All right, so I might be in the camp with Jeff. I don't know. I've tried it. I didn't like it. I just, I don't. So, um, I, so okay, I will, I'm will. i not the fan of coconut to begin with. Like, that's just me. Like, in general, okay, too. coconut, no. Um. I can eat it in certain ways. The idea of drinking coconut water, even on its own, mm-hmm. does not entice me at all. Um, having said that, I have seen coconut water be used in as an ingredient mm-hmm. to make something else mm-hmm. and been like, okay, that makes sense. Um, no, that was coconut milk that, the, that Starbucks used to use. Starbucks used to make a coconut milk like combo like drink like not the frappes but like it's supposed to um their um juices it's part of their juices i think they add the coconut milk um and if you know kickstarter not kickstarter kickstart the um um mountain dew energy drinks Mm -hmm. i think those have coconut water in them really Mm -hmm. yeah I'd have to check it to be sure, but it's interesting. Um, I had a friend who is allergic to coconut, and he didn't know it, and he drank a <gasps> Kickstart, and he had to go to the hospital. So, uh, <laughs> um, let me get 
sec. Come on, there you go. Are you going to give me an ingredient list? That would be great if you could. Yeah, that's really interesting because I don't think I've had any of those, um, the kickstarts. I'm I mean, I've seen, seen them. It. I'm not seeing it in the uh, maybe. Ingredients. Maybe it was. Huh. Are you thinking about the Starbucks refreshers? I'm thinking about the Starbucks refreshers in regards to the the drink I was having, but I, okay. I maybe it was something else. I thought oh, it was well. the refreshers that had maybe some coconut water in them. Yeah. They're coming in a little itty bitty can. Um, I don't really see them anymore. They might not make them. I don't know. Um, mm. I went on a kick with those for a while. Uh, but yeah, so coconut water, maybe. I don't know. Like just like in and of itself, no, wow. not a not nothing. Um, and then the it goes on. The last one we're gonna cover is vanilla. Um, yes. <laughs> I mean, it goes so well with chocolate. It, you know, it, it it kind of is writing along the lines of of what chocolate does, and and mm -hmm. vanilla is very much more of a uh, flavor enhancer. Well, it has a flavor mm -hmm. in its own. It also enhances other flavors, um, right. it, and it's I think in it's kind of in relation to that sort of chemical reaction that is would provide that aphrodisiac pro properties. Right. Plus, a lot of the things I think of as being sensual, sexy, uh, are very vanilla. There's, as in, they have vanilla uh, as an ingredient or something. Right. Mm. Like ice cream. <laughs> like I, I wouldn't be surprised if every single ice cream is has some sort of vanilla in it. So. Mm. Well, depending on the creme anglaise that you make to start the ice cream back, you probably add vanilla in some kind. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. Anyway. Yeah. Huh. Um, I, I mean, I agree with you, Jeff, that like in a generality, I think that we, especially Americans, we find vanilla alluring. Um, we can find it like attractive as a scent, like as a smell. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's why it's used in a lot of baked goods, pastries um anything that's kind of in the sweet uh realm yeah. it can be used in savory but very like i think sparingly um because mm -hmm. it's kind of one of those foods that folks just don't want to uh to have a whole lot of um yeah when it comes to that kind of stuff so that's those are some of the ingredients that it references so that like i said you know we'll have a link to this but it goes on and there's like apparently 70 plus articles um and uh, what's interesting is is that like it starts off with um, uh, they said that they've broken out the recipes by animal protein, which I find intriguing. Um, so they you know talk about a lot of beef and and stuff in the beginning. So there could be some really good stuff in here. I haven't looked through um, all yeah, of it, yeah. but it's, it is a lot. I will admit it's a lot of like, and they look they sound good. Just the little ones that I went through very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, they sound very interesting, and I could see see these being used in some way. Um, for a very nice romantic dinner mm -hmm. that you allows you to kind of entice your their lover into getting their freak on, like. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. So, now that we've got through the articles, was there anything that we did not discuss that you have thought of, or personally you think of as like in terms of like? A uh, uh, food that is sexy, um, whether it's like the actual eating of it or the taste or application, I guess. Mm. Is there any other food? Uh, not really. Although Jim, uh, Jim, Jeff, bringing up ice cream definitely brought that up to me. Mm -hmm. uh, that thought of like, kind of, it's more. It's not necessarily the food in and of itself, but more just the sex play and fun with it having with that you know ice cream is 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 it's it's meant to be shared in some ways mm -hmm. it's 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 you know you're licking it it's very just that kind of like you know moments and feelings that kind of can entice the 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 senses a bit um it's cold but also has a flavor it's 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 um you know you can add things to it like chocolate or, or strawberries or um, 
hell, watermelon, I don't know. Um, you can have a watermelon server and be like, oh, yeah, um, those kind of things. Right. Um, I will say this. I think uh, pastries and desserts, just as a broad category, can be um, pretty sexy. Uh, included in our graphic is a donut with icing that's dripping off of it. Um, notably, the image that I picked has a figure coming through the hole. There's nothing suggestive <laughs> about that at all. No, um, not at all. <laughs> Thank you, David, for the demonstration, the visual. Uh, <laughs> for those listening to the audio version of the podcast, they're like, what in the world? Um, <laughs> all right, all right. Like, not so many <laughs> fakers. <laughs> Didn't take you long to just like whoop. Nope. <laughs> Dang. I mean, you had the grapefruit method. Oh, oh. <laughs> good one, Jeff. You, you bitches <laughs> forgot about that, didn't you? Uh, well, to be I fair, did. I didn't forget about it. I just wasn't recalling it in this moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if anybody wants to know, just 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 search YouTube for grapefruit method. You'll find it. <laughs> um, sorry, I was just catching up on the Telegram chat because I missed the most recent messages. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, the good old eggplant. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Although I yeah, think it's... that's more of the emoji. Than it is the right, actual right. So plant. Here, here's my question, and I don't know if there's been articles written about this. Where and when? Who decided what will represent the the anatomy? Like <laughs> when why? it comes I, to emojis, <laughs> right? <laughs> like I'm like I don't know. Why I egg, why, I think they egg had plant. eggplant for some reason. It was was added, and then people just started using it for that. Like I, I don't think it was intended, in purposely put in there to be used for that, like reference. Right, right, right. I was just confused. I was like, the first time I ever saw like eggplant references, I was like, I don't what nightshade. I'm huh? You know like I was so eggplant emoji. I was so confused because I was like, but I'm sorry. Most eggplants I've seen are very girthy. Uh, mm-hmm. And not necessarily uh, lengthy. So I was like, um, okay, I've okay. seen penises that look like that, but they've been modified. Like, mm. <laughs> so apparently, uh, uh, according to dictionary.com, the eggplant emoji is a long purple eggplant, but it is really just used to represent a penis. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Is the per uh, 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 somebody's actually defining it as it? How the purple oh, wow. fruit surpassed the banana? Take the same thing as uh, yeah. I just and it's not so much that I think there's a like a much better emoticon like emoji you know to use. I just was perplexed like. This is me wearing my old man hat. I was like, what? When? How? Um, A peach representing uh, buttocks? R, Uh, R, 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 vagina. Yeah, like, I mean, I I could sort of comprehend it to a point, but I don't know. Complete sorted history of the eggplant emoji. Yeah. I'm very curious. Anyway, that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a story for uh, um, another show, maybe. Um, I will say this. Uh, I don't know. I think of most fruit, at least fruits that I enjoy that I like, could be you know, sexy. Um, yeah. Like I love pineapple. Um, yeah, I enjoy peaches. Um, you know, so uh, it wouldn't, you know, surprise me, you know, in some ways to to think of them uh, like that. 
I, I think the big thing with butts and peaches is the fact that the the peach emoji has that crevice, <laughs> that which is very much like crack of an ass. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Apparently, Damon's in a mood. He wants to spank something. There's, a, there, <laughs> there's also the the Prince song, Peach. Mm, She's a peach. Mm, yes. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm trying to think if there's really anything else that really um, epitomies or like represents sexy. Nice stink. Uh, so yes, like I, I, this is not aphrodisiac this is this is stuff that if you're trying to woo me mm. this is some of the things that would that would probably do okay so that being the case like if you if you want to like and i'm not saying this is going to get me in the mood but if you want to have an expression of love make me some killer mac and cheese like, if you can make the mac and cheese the way I like mac and cheese, and I'm just going to say this. So since we're having a let's talk about food, I'm going to mm -hmm. diverge for just a second. Yeah, sure. If you want to if you want to fall into a YouTube rabbit hole, there's a whole collection, a whole like series, whatever of videos that you could watch of people commenting on other foods <laughs> that have been made in the same grouping. So like abuelas talking about tamales. Um, mm. you know, I, I, uh, I don't understand ja tamales. <laughs> Jamaican, Jamaican, uh, mothers discussing a Jamaican dish. Like, like mm -hmm. it's cultural mostly, but oh, good gravy. I fell down that recently and you know, what, <laughs> you, know, you know, what came out of all of it consistently was ain't nobody agreeing on, on what they like when it comes to a dish. We are all so individual in our tastes, and it reaffirmed for me, like, man, restaurants have it hard. They really do to make people happy because everybody's got their version, their <laughs> way that they like, whatever that thing is. And Look I'm just him. like, what? <laughs> Look at the hair movement. There. Well, because, like, that was the <laughs> best. I think I talked to you about this, David. Like, yes, they just – it they just keep saying like, mm, no, like, and it was funny. In some of these videos, mostly women, they were like, mm -mm. like, yeah. they would push the dish away. They would take the tiniest bite. I mean, and they would be so critical. They'd be like, it's not creamy oh, enough, it's, not spicy. Yeah. it's not crunchy enough. It's not this. It's not that. They didn't use this. It's not authentic. And I was like, damn, y'all are just mean, 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 mean. Like mm -hmm. you know. And I don't know that they were insulting. I just mean that they were. Crazy. Oh, I think some of them are probably were insulting. Yeah. If you're going to be critical in a dish, eat the dish. Don't just take a little nibble. Have a full oh. bite. Oh, honey. <laughs> start. Oh. Start with that. Oh, honey. Start with that. No, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I understand they're not going to do that because they're already <laughs> critical just from looking at it. But you can at least. <laughs> If you're going to authentically criticize something, I will, I will not trust your judgment if you just take a little, little tiny bit. Well, I don't think I would trust any of those judgments anyway. Just, just, just a decent size bite. Doesn't have to be like a big bite saw. or anything. Mm -hmm. Just, just I'll, the, yeah, you know, they didn't even do that. Full soup Hell, spoon for soup. Barely... You you take a good good drink of a drink, you know, and uh, uh, you, you take a good chunk of this uh, of the cut up mm -hmm. thing you know it's got to be a full yeah. spoonful or so at least you don't have to eat the whole di dish but get a <laughs> well, decent well. sized bite it doesn't have to be a big bite sounds, just not not a nibble sounds, <laughs> right that sounds great in theory i, I don't honey, trust anybody like somebody, who doesn't do that because you're not that's authentically somebody, actually trying the dish we get it jeff sorry I went away, but... <laughs> david you were gonna say <laughs> I'm gonna say some of these people could barely even get the one bite down. Like that's how like critical these mm. people were. Yeah. Like it was that like critical. Now, is it fair? Is it right? Is it accurate? Hell to the no.
but is it funny? Is it entertaining? <laughs> is it is it is it is it doing what it like? The whole point. I'm just gonna say, tell you, Gary. The whole point of these videos is people like to see like people being critical. Like people mm-hmm. like to see that shit. We like to see like, oh hell no, I'm never gonna touch that. This is my it's my way or the highway. We like that. It's a it's, it's, it's the reaction to you. Knew, appeal. Yeah. And you know going in, like I knew going into watching some of these videos, I knew going in exactly what was gonna happen. It was gonna be three ladies criticizing one person's dish, never never taking more than maybe a morsel of a bite and being yeah. like no, I don't like this. <laughs> this is shit. Like it's garbage. Whatever. Like they may not have been able to say that because they're trying to be nice. Because it's still like they're on camera, so they're going to be nice about it. But they sure as hell were not going to be like, "Oh, I actually like this." No, that was never going to happen. Well, Ever. wait. Did, <laughs> did you see the ones from Britain? No, I hadn't seen. Oh that my one. god, the ones from the UK are, are hysterical to me because. They are all trying to be so polite. <laughs> They're like, oh, like in one of them, I think there's a nice counter. I think the word nice is counted because this woman just keeps saying it over and over and over and over and over again. Well, this is nice. Oh, it's very nice. Mm, very nice. Like, I mean, just yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. so funny. Yeah. These, these, the, 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 the overall purpose of these things are not like genuine on it, genuine critiques. Like I will like, Jeff, I get what you're saying yeah. fully and I agree with you. But, like, the purpose of these videos is to not do that. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't take their, like, their, their, I wouldn't take any of their critiques with seriously? a pinch of salt. Like, yeah, like, I wouldn't take it seriously. Like, like, oh, like, like, why is it, like, like, there was the one, there was the one with the mac, that's the one I saw recently, with the mac and cheese that was just like, y'all didn't even, like you didn't even like taste that. Like you barely had that in your mouth long enough to taste anything on it. <laughs> I'm, like, sorry. How... I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <sighs> this makes right. me think of like people in a bathhouse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, no, no. To be fair, if it fu- if it smells like funk, I can understand I mean... why you're gonna bypass it. Where you're gonna be like, uh, no. Like, nope, not happening. Like, mm-hmm. so there, it does make sense to me why some foods you would just would not, it would not even pass the sniff test, let alone like get in your mouth. I, I get that to a point, but I agree with you, David. I think the point's well taken that these whole series, like these videos, were made intentionally to entertain because there's this criticism. But the whole reason I bring it up is because bringing it back about mac and cheese, I was like, yeah, like I've known for a long time that like people are really opinionated about mac and cheese some people like it dry some people like it wet some people like it saucy some people like it really creamy like some people like it robust some people like it with extra things in it um some people like a casserole some people don't i mean it's just it's really interesting to me like how uh varied people can be about that kind of a thing but you know ranger brings up an excellent point in the the live chat and says i feel like it's part of the reason that thai restaurants let you pick how spicy you want your food on a scale of one to four, or one to five, at least in their experience, because everybody has preferences. Yeah. Um, and I think dish. that, right, right. I think that's that's the the upside or the beauty of it. Um, if you can adjust taste in, in certain ways, but you know, a lot of restaurants, at least American restaurants, we're not built on that concept. Like, yes, well, we have these adages, these sayings. You know, the customer's always right. Blah 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 blah. This that you know, that's all fine and dandy, but people are picky and they like what they like and i think if you're if you're that finicky about what you eat um then you know it uh, life is probably a challenge mm-hmm. um because people who will eat, yeah that eat the same things every day every week every month every year like they 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 very rarely do much more than that and that is sad to me <laughs> because there are so many things you can explore now don't get me wrong i get i think we all get into our habits and there are foods that we will 
pretty much always order like from like a fast food place or what have you because we know that's what we're going to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um, But on the flip of that, there's always a desire, there should be an interest and desire to explore and taste other foods. We've seen the memes of the like list of foods and you score a point for any food you don't want to eat, you never will eat, et cetera, et cetera. And I've seen those lists and I'm just like, I've I, like, I've pretty much had everything on them except for one or two things here and there. Um, so it's very interesting to me and going back kind of to tie it to this sexy list. Like I like the idea of some of these foods and I would never have considered them quote unquote sexy. But now that I do, I'm, curious um i will admit i like that article that kind of gave more specifics about like why Mm -hmm. um because that does help in some ways it makes sense now again celery um okay uh sure if you say so uh (laughs) but celery to me has never been sexy but i guess it kind of is i guess i don't know i don't know i don't know well and this kind of makes me think david what you were just describing is that that um the essence of it made me think of Aunt Auntie Mame and the quote, you know, life's a banquet and most suckers are just starving to death or something mm-hmm. along those lines. Um, and I mean, that is a bit of a critical statement. I, I will admit that. But I think the essence of it is like if you <clears throat> if you just stay in your lane and you kind of do the same thing all the time, um, that's fine. That's a, that's a choice. However, if you expand and broaden your horizons, try different things, go other places, I think you will find like that you will have some pleasant experiences. Uh, I think of that when it comes to my hometown here. A lot of us who have gone away and come mm-hmm. back, who have traveled, who have lived in other places, seen <clears throat> other folks, cultures, even if you haven't really left the US, you know, the US is pretty big. 48 contiguous states, lots of mileage. Um, you could you could learn quite a bit, you know, and I think we, uh, for lack of a better way, we always like say it makes you more well-rounded. Mm. So I think that that's a, a key factor in like expanding the potential of things as opposed to having the same thing all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, don't get me wrong. There, there are some things that are just classics that are favorites. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, to consistently go with what you know and what you like. But I do think that, you know, one of the benefits of being who we are is if we have the opportunity to try something different, to, to you know, put 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 your reticence, your reluctance aside and say, you know what, uh, we could, I could try that, you know. And this isn't just about food, even though this wasn't the intention of this episode, you know. It could help in other realms as well. Mm-hmm other arenas hey you might find that you like food and sex (laughs) not you (laughs) not you (laughs) (laughs) talking in general to the audience at large that is what i'm saying i know (laughs) wow oh i'm hungry well how about you thank you to whoever gave us a thumbs up on this episode on youtube already we appreciate that Yeah, we appreciate that. Hey, and guess what? Uh, I think that's the end. I think Mm -hmm. we talked enough about food. Uh, Playways, contact us. Pop over to uh, CubsOutLoud.com where we pretty much have everything there. You can email us at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Find us on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate place of the URL. And join our entourage chat where we uh, talked about a uh, old advertisement and also um, dog toys and sex toys. You can find out more about that as well as a microphone that looks like a penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's a t- uh, tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can find out when we're planning to record these shows by subscribing to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can get various uh, uh, accoutrements. Uh, we were all wearing some sort of COL shirt. I'm wearing a V3 shirt, the old version. It looks a lot better. We got a consensus my four play shirt, puppy style, over there with Damon. And uh, down there, Gary is wearing his Slappy Bottom 23 shirt. 
<laughs> Proud. Proudly. <laughs> Bitch. I hate you. <laughs> that's it. That's over at Zazzle slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you, can, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, and uh, you can also just send us some cash at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on anywhere that you can subscribe to podcasts. If you, for some reason, can't find it on something, let me know and I'll see if I can fix that. But I'm pretty sure we're, we're pretty much anywhere. Write us. Subscribe to us. You can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Up, Box Cup, Puppy, Box Cup, Box, something or other, as well as Windgem, W Y N D G E M, uh, on Twitch, where I've been streaming. Uh, uh, this last week, I've been streaming some StarCraft, the original StarCraft, remastered, also cartooned in the Carbots animation style. And I enjoy playing it better in that style. Um, uh, as well as some WoW and some Dungeons and Dragons. So. Uh, which, of course, VODs are right over here on YouTube. Damon? Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCup79 on most bear-related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody! Good night, everybody! Ciao for now!